Hi everyone, and thanks for checking out this movie review. So today we'll be continuing with my current horror franchise uh, that I'm taking a look at for the month of September, and that is the Halloween franchise. So today we're going to be taking a look at the second film in the franchise, um, the original Halloween 2 from 1981. So yeah, just recently rewatched uh, this movie for this um for this video and review. Of course, I've seen it many times before, but um, rewatched it just recently. So I'll go ahead and start off with the premise and the setup of this movie, the cast, things like that. And then I'll get into my thoughts and review, which will contain spoilers as normal. So Halloween 2 is a 1981 American slasher film directed by Rick Rosenthal in his directorial debut. Written and produced by John Carpenter and Deborah Hill, starring Jamie Lee Curtis and Donald Pleasant to reprise their respective role, roles as Laurie Strode and Dr. Sam Loomis. It is the second installment in the Halloween film series and serves as a direct sequel to Halloween 1978. The plot picks up directly after the first film, with Michael Myers following survival, survivor Laurie Strode to the local hospital, where his psychiatrist, Dr. Loomis, continues, to per, continues his pursuit of him. On October 31st, 1978, Michael Myers is shot by his psychiatrist, Dr. Sam Loomis, and falls off a balcony. He survives and escapes into the night. Wandering the alleys, he steals a kitchen knife from an elderly couple and kills the teenage girl next door. Meanwhile, Laurie Strode, who narrowly avoided being killed that night, is taken to Haddonfield Memorial Hospital, while Loomis continues his pursuit of Michael, accompanied by Sheriff Lee Brackett. Loomis mistakes costume teenager Ben Tramer for Michael, resulting in Ben being hit by a police car and burning to death. Upon learning his daughter Annie has been killed by Michael, Sheriff Brackett blames Loomis and abandons in the search, leaving Deputy Gary Hunt to take his place. At the hospital, paramedic Jimmy begins to fall in love with Lori, but head nurse Virginia, Virginia Alves, Alves limits the time he spends with her. After hearing a news broadcast revealing Lori's location, Michael makes his way to the hospital where he cuts the phone lines and disables the, the cars. Wandering the halls in search of Lori, he kills the security guard, the doctor, and several nurses throughout the night. In her hospital room, Lori dreams about the time she learned she was adopted and remembers she once visited a young Michael at the sanitarium. Jimmy and nurse Jill Franco search the hospital for Lori, who is trying to evade Michael. Jimmy finds the body of Mrs. Alves before slipping into a pool of her blood and knocking himself unconscious. So that's probably more information there than I needed to give, but that's sort of the setup and the premise of the movie. It basically is just a continuation of the first film, um, taking us more to a hospital setting in this movie. So... Cast-wise, I'm only going to name a few of them. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis, obviously, is Laurie Stroh. Donald Pleasance is Dr. Sam Loomis. Charles Cyphers is Sheriff Lee Brackett and Lance Guest as Jimmy. Of course, Lance Guest would go on to play in, I um, can't remember the character, but he was in La The Last Starfighter and the infamous Jaws the Revenge. Um, not the greatest movie there, but I love Last Starfighter. Anyway, he's in this movie as Jimmy, um, the young paramedic, I believe. So, yeah, that's Halloween 2 in a nutshell. Um, my thoughts and opinion about it. This is a good sequel. It's a good direct sequel to the original movie. So I'll just kind of get into my thoughts. Again, spoiler review, spoilers, um, so you've been warned. Um, starting with the pros, I, I really do like that it's it's a direct sequel, meaning that it actually takes place right from the moment that the first film ended. I thought that was really cool, and their execution of it was top-notch. I mean, if you didn't have the ending credits of the first movie and the beginning credits of this movie, you could just you could just attach these two together and you think you were watching one long movie. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty flawless transition. They did a really good job of that, and... Um, the fact that it continues right where the original left off, same night, same characters, that they were able to get back, at least the lead characters. Um, yeah, it was really seamless. So I, that was one of my favorite things about this particular movie. Um, I really like the opening credits. You got to talk about that. It's kind of like the first movie with the jack-o'-lantern jack uh, on the side as they're, as they're throwing, as they're going through the opening credits. However, it's even better in this one. 
because eventually the jack o' lantern gets torn apart, revealing a skull and webs in it. It's just really cool special effects, very effective for this movie. Just really enjoyed that. One of my favorite things about this sequel, actually. Um, the movie, for the most part, has the same great tone and feel as the original um, movie, especially with the atmosphere that they use in the cinematography and the camera work. We get some some POV shots of Michael, especially at the beginning of the film, but even kind of in the middle of the film, and a really good camera work once again. Um, Donald Pleasance is once again on point with the great performances, Dr. Sam Loomis. He really uh, ups the. He really brings it um, once again. Um, after the original, uh, really brings it to the table. Really enjoyed his performance. There's definitely this is kind of a mix, more than a pro or a con for me. But for most people, I know it'll be more. Most horror fans, especially younger ones, was probably a pro. Um, there's definitely more blood and gore in this movie than the original. They kind of took from Friday the Thirteenth which took from the original Halloween. So for a little while there, it seemed like they were trying to copy each other a little bit. Um, actually, this movie also has a recap of the very end of the first Halloween. And I know Friday the 13th, the first five or six movies, uh, did that on a regular. And if you remember my reviews, I really didn't care for it. I don't mind it in this movie because it's very short. What they recap is just like the, the last two minutes of the film or so. Um, and like I said, it's really a seamless transition into this movie. So there was reason for it, I guess I would say. Um, but there is definitely more blood and gore in this movie. They definitely, um, I think it was, I think they sort of edited that in there. John Carpenter did after it wasn't necessarily originally there. So they edited it in some more, some more gory scenes with a lot more blood and stuff. But like I said, at the time in 1981, it was just kind of the way of the slasher film and the horror film. Um, there's actually quite a big, a big difference between 1978, 77, 78 compared to 80, 81, where, where horror films, slasher films were definitely more gory, more bloody. Just think of Friday the 13th. Um, and, and, and on that point, Michael Myers is even more brutal with his kills. In the first movie, it was more strangulations and more of the tension building up. It wasn't so focused on the kills. Where in this movie, it's definitely focused more on the kills. Um, his brutality of them, as well as the blood and the gore that I mentioned earlier. Um, the score, once again, is pretty much the same from the first movie with a different flavor. Um, the score is a little bit more digi digitalized, digitized, yeah, not digitalized, <laughs> digitized, a um, little bit more organ. It almost sounds like like organ instead of um, like piano, maybe. Um, but it's still the same score. It's still got the great the great score that everybody knows about that knows what they're watching when they hear it. It's just a little bit different flavor, and I actually didn't mind that. I enjoyed that, actually. Um, I think it works well with this movie. Um, I really liked and, and enjoyed the claustrophobic setting of the hospital setting, which you get for most of the movie. I would say two-thirds of the movie is uh, the hospital setting, and then the other quarter is probably just kind of wandering around Hattonfield again. Um the, the third act is really solid with Laurie, Loomis, and Michael. Great suspense and tension that's built up and when they're all three in the hospital and they're the only ones left. Um, I thought that was really effective. Great special effects and great makeup, especially in this movie. And namely, I, I'm thinking of one scene. It's probably the best kill that most people talk about, too, in this movie. And that, of course, is the nurse scene, the hot tub scene, where she gets her head dunked in the scalding, scalding hot water tank. Um... And and each time he pulls her head up, you can see her, she's more red, red at first, and then her skin starting to come out. Just they just did a, a magnificent job with that, with the special effects there and the makeup, and with the kill. It probably is the best kill in this movie um, overall. So yeah, that's uh, that's for the most part. That's my pros. It's it's definitely in the same vein as the first movie. A really good direct sequel. Um, as as in the same night as I said before. That's why I call it a direct sequel as opposed to just a sequel like the other ones will be. Um, this is definitely the, the most direct sequel. And it almost feels like, even though I might not agree, it almost feels like the most necessary one if you're going to have a sequel. But I didn't necessarily need a sequel from the original Halloween, but that's a different story for a different video. But it does feel more like the, the most effective uh, sequel. Um, now I'll just get into some cons, and there are some cons with this movie. Um, the biggest one's the cardinal sin I'm going to have with all of these sequels. 
and really sequels and, and other franchise horror franchises as well. But especially this one, which is they give Michael Myers a reason for what he's doing. They give him a reason for why he kills people and what he's doing. And it just it starts explaining too much. Now, they don't explain too much or a lot in this movie compared to what they will in the, the next several movies which I'll get into when I review those, but it does start to give a backstory and a reason for why Michael's there, why he's targeting that town and those people and those characters, I should say. And that's just right away. It takes away from the scares and from the effectiveness of the original. Um, the whole the whole sibling angle it just feels kind of lazily added and, and written, and it, may, and it definitely makes the character of Myers less, less effective than the original movie, kind of going into what I was saying about giving him a reason. Um, the whole sibling angle, it's just kind of, like I said, it's just kind of, it just feels, um, what's the word I'm searching for here? And I don't know about predictable, but it's just lazy, I guess. I guess is the best way to say it. Um, Dick Warlock's portrayal of Michael Myers, um, since this is only the second movie, I can only compare it to the first one, where Nick Castle... Um, played Myers. Um, I don't think his performance, Dick Warlock's I'm talking about in this movie, is quite as effective, quite as good as, as Nick Castle. Now, it's definitely not the worst performance or portrayal of Myers in this franchise, but we're only two movies in, so I do have to bring it up. He's just a little bit too robotic for me. Um, just the way he walks and carries himself, it's just at times, especially, he's just a little bit too robotic and not doesn't have the great natural flow and feel of a of more human, some supernatural. He feels a lot more zombie supernatural in this movie, and I don't think that was quite their intention. At least it wasn't as effective for me. Um, most of the characters in this movie, the side characters, are the hospital characters, of course, the the EMTs and the paramedics and the nurses and the doctor. They're very stock, very cliche, just like the Friday the 13th movies and other horror movies during this time. Um, just none of them are, it's, none of them are well written. They're not interesting. They're just kind of there to be killed by, by Myers. Um, the whole side story with Loomis killing Ben Tramer by mistake, mistaking him for Michael Myers with the same kind of mask that he's wearing. Just not really that interesting. It kind of felt like filler to me for the, like the second half of the first act, beginning of the second act, it, it kind of felt like a way to keep him at bay and let Myers get to the hospital and stuff, move the story. It's kind of those story conveniences I've talked about in other reviews. Um, I didn't find it that interesting. Also, the scene between um, between Loomis and, and Marion Chambers in the back of Mar the marshal's car, when the marshal is, he's been, uh, Loomis has been ordered by the state, basically, for this marshal to take him in. They have this conversation about telling, basically just explaining to the audience, oh, yeah, by the way, Lori Strode is Michael Myers' sister. And, um, and of course, Dr. Loomis right away, well, that's why he's here. And it's just, it just feels unnatural. It's not needed. We didn't get that kind of stuff in the first movie. It just feels forced. I don't think the pacing's quite as solid overall in this movie as it was in the original and I also don't think the movie was as well directed. I mean, I don't think Rosenthal did a terrible job directing it, especially for being his directorial debut. But you can tell it doesn't have Carpenter's feel in it. Um, and overall, it, it just feels it's more in the vein of that typical 80s slasher with some of the with a lot of the cl same cliches, jump scares and characters and stuff, as well as having a little bit more blood and gore here and there, focusing more on the kills than the characters, I guess is the best way to say it. Spending less time writing the characters and developing them and more time on how can we make the kills as creative and as gruesome looking as we can. I think that's about the best way to sum it up. So, so yeah, overall, those are my thoughts on Halloween 2 from 1981, the original Halloween 2. I really enjoy this movie. I could definitely put it on along with the original on Halloween night. It's kind of a nice two for one, which could actually be viewed as just one if you kind of take the credits out of it. It's definitely not as effective or iconic as the first movie, but as sequels go to horror movies, it is up there, in my opinion. It is a very worthy, very good sequel in that regard. Um, they took some different some different uh, paths and, and things that I necessarily wouldn't have done, but they made it work for the most part, and I still had a good time watching it. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to give this movie an 8 out of 10 as a Halloween movie. 
Like I said, it doesn't quite live up to the original, but still a really good solid sequel. Eight out of ten. Go ahead and give me your thoughts down below, guys, on the original Halloween 2 from 1981. What you thought of it, your likes, dislikes, um, down in the comments below. Please like this video and hit the little notification bell to see when my next the review videos are going to drop. And please subscribe to my channel to see future horror reviews, including a continuation of the Halloween franchise. So thank you for watching this review and stay scared. Bye.